Uh, can you tell the situations? Can you tell? Yes, uh, I'd be happy to. Yes. Uh, during nine, in the, during 1967 and 68, during the height of the Tet Offensive, mm -hmm. uh, there were many patrols being sent out mm -hmm. uh, to conduct patrols along the Laotian border. Uh, I had just come back from 23 days in the field. I was very, very tired, exhausted. It was mm -hmm. just, uh, we worked sometimes 24 hours mm -hmm. without stopping. Just got six hours to rest, and we'd go out again uh, for another 24 hours. And I had come back from 23 days of that type of duty. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as I came back, I saw my name on a list to go out again. And my best friend volunteered, and he said, Richard, it's okay, I want to go out for you. Mm -hmm. And we argued about it, but he insisted. Mm -hmm. And in the military, it really doesn't matter. Uh, if, if a friend wants to do your work for you, just so long as someone is there to fill in for you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my friend went out on that patrol and he was killed. Oh. So, uh... So you I feel had, guilty? Oh, yes. A my, lot. Yes, I had, uh, so young to have such a weight, a burden on me. And, uh, I discussed this, uh, with the chaplains. Uh -huh. And, uh, the information they gave me, the consolation they gave me, it, I listened to it, but it really didn't affect my life. It couldn't remove the guilt. Uh -huh. And on an interesting, uh, an interesting experience, destiny brought me to a temple in Ubon, mm -hmm. Ubon Rachatani. And I went into the temple and I sat in the back, mm -hmm. very sad, very quiet. Actually, I'd gone with some friends to take photos of the temple. And when they'd finished taking pictures, they left. But I remained because I felt so peaceful there. Mm -hmm. And while I was sitting in the rear of the temple, the uh, the monks, the resident monks, came in to perform chanting. Mm -hmm. And after they finished chanting, the senior monk, the abbot, turned and saw me in the uh, back of the temple. And I found out two years ago. What is it? The name of the uh, the abbot of that temple was Lung Pa Ajahn Cha, oh. who wound up being my teacher for one year. I know him. I think he's very famous in teaching the Westerner. Yes, I didn't know that at the time, but I discovered that uh, when I was in Nong Kai, mm -hmm. uh, in a bookshop, when I saw his beautiful smiling face on a book. You just remind. I remembered, I told my wife, I said, that's the wonderful monk that taught me for a year. Wow, did you know that he's very, very famous? I didn't know it, I didn't know it. And when I was in the temple, sitting in the back all those years ago, he saw me, and he sent a young monk to speak to me. Mm -hmm. This young monk at the time had just graduated from Tamasat University and he spoke English. Mm -hmm. And he came to me in the back of the temple and he had brought a message to me from the abbot. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen any of these men before in my entire life. And this young monk told me that the abbot had a message for me and the message was this. He said that he knew my heart was very heavy and that I was very, very sad. Wow. And I was shocked because I hadn't spoken to anybody about this. Uh -huh. Just a few close friends of mine knew this. It's very and interesting. the chaplains <laughs> on the base. Uh -huh. And he began to tell me exactly what was going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And he told me that <clears throat> I shouldn't grieve for this friend that had just died. And I was absolutely shocked. How could he know about these things? And he told me, he asked me a question. He said, can you stop the sun from rising in the morning? I told him, no, that's, that's impossible. No one can stop the sun from rising. And the young man said, my abbot asks you then, why, do you, why are you sorry for your friend? I said, well, because I lost him and that he died in my place. Mm -hmm. He said, the abbot says, you could have not stopped your friend from dying no more than you could have stopped the sun from rising in the morning because that was his destiny. That wow. was his karma. And that's the first time I'd ever heard anything about the law of karma in my life. Mm -hmm. So it made a huge impact on me, first of all. Just only that sentence. Just that sentence. But it's a very good sentence. It's touched the heart. Yes. Very powerful. The words of Lumpo Ajahn Chah had power to them. And immediately, because I was so shocked and so impressed that how could this man know what was going on in my life mm -hmm. when only two or three people did. Then he went on to tell me, uh, the message from the abbot was, he knows your heart and now you want to go and kill people. You want to take revenge for your friend. And, and you want did to you really him. feel that? Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Oh. I wanted to leave uh, the job, the uh, assignment that I had. You and didn't I know that that is so wrong. I just, <laughs> no, I didn't know that. And I just wanted to take revenge. Mm -hmm. 
And the abbot's message to this young man to me was, it would be better that you kill the ignorance in your life rather than to take a human life mm. and put blood on your hands for all of eternity. And when he said that, oh, the hair <laughs> on my neck stand up. <laughs> stand up and I had goosebumps and it made such an impact on me. Though I didn't understand why it was happening, though I didn't understand how he could know these things, mm -hmm. I knew that this man had power, mm -hmm. great wisdom, and that he loved me wow. enough to correct me. So that is the beginnings of how you become yes. interested in Buddhism. Yes, and then I asked the young monk if I could learn more about this law of karma. He spoke to the abbot, and the abbot said, if you come here, I will teach you. And even though I was in the military, I came as much as I could to the temple, sometimes three times a week. So my wow. friends thought I was crazy <laughs> because they wanted to That's go downtown. That's what I'm going to ask you to, Yeah, I heard before that um, when people are in the military, they're very stressful. Yeah. And when they are off the jobs, they yeah. just go to parties, drinkings, yeah. dancings. But you didn't do that. No, right after I had met the, tem I met the abbot in the temple, Instead of going downtown, uh, as you're yeah, correct, soldiers live under life and death situations. And for them, drinking alcohol mm -hmm. and carrying on is a release, a form of release to them. Mm -hmm. And I was no different than any other soldier. But after meeting Lumpa, mm -hmm. and speaking to him, the abbot of that temple, mm -hmm. I wanted to know more about Dhamma. So okay. I stopped going downtown. Mm -hmm. So every free, time, every free moment I had, I spent in the temple learning mm -hmm. about That's, Buddhism. Yeah. It's very interesting, but we may have to break right now, and so then okay, we come fine. back and talk about this okay. after the break. Thank you. Okay. The law of karma dictates that whatever you do, there is a consequence to it, mm -hmm. and no one can escape those consequences. We're going to call. <laughs> เชิญร่วมทำความดีเพื่อในหลวงเพื่อถวายเป็นพระราชกุศลและอุทิศแด่บรรพบุรุษผู้ล่วงลับในงานท่านจะได้ร่วมพิธีทอดผ้าป่าถวายจัตุปัจจัยเฮยธรรมช่วยเหลือ266วัดในสีจังหวัดภาคใต้ไถ่ชีวิตโคกระบือ9ตัวปล่อยปลาและสรรพสัตว์กว่า1 0,000 ชีวิตจัดงานหน้าบริเวณท่าน้ําสถานีดับเพลิงอําเภอเมืองจังหวัดสระบุรีวันศุกร์ที่6เมษายน2550เวลา12นาฬิกา30นาทีถึง14นาฬิกา30นาทีสอบถามรายละเอียดเพิ่มเติมได้ที่0817326287 0859009951ร่วมอนุโมทนาและสนับสนุนโดยคณะสงฆ์จังหวัดสระบุรีเทศบาลเมืองสระบุรีชมรมสระบุรีร่มเย็นถูกข้อครับคุณผู้ชมครับกลับเข้ามาสู่ช่วงที่2ของคุยกันถูกคอนะครับยังคงคุยกับคุณริชาร์ดเอสโพซิโดนะครับซึ่งเป็นชาวอเมริกันที่สนใจในพุทธศาสนานะครับแล้วตอนนี้ก็อยู่ที่ประเทศไทยนะครับเมื่อสักครู่นี้นะครับเราคุยกันไปถึงเรื่องที่เขาเริ่มที่จะมาสนใจพระพุทธศาสนานะครับเดี๋ยวเราจะมาคุยกันต่อนะครับว่าหลังจากนั้นเกิดอะไรขึ้นกับเขานะครับครับคุณริชาร์ด what we left before the break is we talk about your how are you interested in Buddhism and how is it change your life Mm -hmm. And what happened after that? I mean, you have to go back to the United States, right? Well, after uh, after I had the opportunity, after I had that amazing experience in the temple, mm -hmm. uh, for the remainder remaining part of the year that I was in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. every free moment, every free time that I, all the free time that I had, I spent in the temple mm -hmm. and uh, learning as much as I could about Dhamma. Mm -hmm.